Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic, Odin Well, and today, ah, uh, Hollywood just cannot stop. Disney cannot stop. And, of course, this is something that we've known about for a little while because it was revealed that, especially when the Fox-Disney merger was finalized, that there was a desire on behalf of the Disney side of things to take some of the most well-known classic Fox properties and either remake, reboot, or re-release. Now, I'm fine with re-releases, if you mean extra content and the original cut of a film, but when you come to rebooting, remaking, etc., or making prequels or sequels to something, that is when I just get completely over it because we live in such an oversaturated market of prequels, sequels, etc., that it's starting to get very, very tiresome. And one of those names of movies that was being put on that list was Home Alone. And we all know that no one is asking for a Home Alone remake. No one wants a Home Alone remake. If you want to have a better understanding and idea of how many people actually want a Home Alone movie, go ahead and look to the numbers for Home Alone 3. That did not have Macaulay Culkin or any of the original people involved and also strayed away from the formula just enough to be more focused on kids and less focused on overall family entertainment. If we can say anything about the original Home Alone with Macaulay Culkin, it is that that is a film made for the family. It is not just a kids movie, though of course there's things in there that kids will enjoy, but it's got something for dads, it's got something for moms, it's got something for every member of the family, which is why we love it still, which is why we will constantly go back to it and watch it, especially... Lost in New York is a movie that we will tend to watch during Christmas. In fact, I would say it's a great Christmas movie because of the various themes of the film and, of course, the fact that it takes place during that time of the year. But let's go ahead and dive into this article from Observer.com. So now that Disney owns Fox, the Mouse House is combing through its new library for valuable properties to mine. To that end, Disney CEO Bob Iger confirmed on Disney's earnings call in August that a remake of the Chris Columbus-directed Home Alone 4 is in the works a new, is in the works a new generation. Now, Observer has learned a few more details about the project. So take this with a grain of salt. This indeed is someone on a uh, WordPress site. So <laughs> obviously it, it, it seems to be pretty reliable. However, it, the grammar in that <laughs> first paragraph definitely has me causing for some concern here. But we do know that Bob Iger was reported to have talked about this in this call. This is something that was, uh, you know, this is something that was reported on many other sites too. So we know that at the very least it's being talked about and it's being considered. However, this is also something that is connected to uh, another major YouTube channel, as you shall see in a second. So the new Home Alone film will follow a husband and wife who go to war with a young boy, Max, who has stolen from them, as originally reported by Collider's Jeff Snyder. So this is something that's coming from Collider, which we all know is definitely not a shill organization by any means. Uh, just go ahead and look to the total loss of coolness about Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and not getting access and all of the debacle that happened with that live on air, which was hilarious to look at because it was the access media and people that I actually used to really like over on Collider. I used to love the schmoes, and now, of course, they've just gone off and, and done, done their own thing. It's just becoming ridiculous now at this point. But with all that being said, this, to me, already sounds stupid. The fact that you're already changing some characters' names tells me that this is not a Home Alone film and that you instead are just rebooting the entire franchise with new characters, and that's not cool. If you're going to remake something, do it right at the very least. However, I would say, no, don't do that because you shouldn't be touching this franchise in the first place because no one wants it. No one is asking for it. As I said, if you want to go ahead, to me, the only way that going back to this franchise could be worth anything is if they were able to get Macaulay Culkin to come back as a father. Could you imagine if they decided to say, we're doing one-off film. This is not a tr attempt to try and money grab anything. We are instead giving a, a giant uh, dedication to the original and we're going to flip everything on its head because now the you know rambunctious kid is now going to be played by, you know, is no longer going to be played by Macaulay Culkin, but now he's going to be the father who has to deal with a kid that's just like him. Could you imagine if that was the case? That would be interesting to me. But then the father would only be in the movie for a certain period of time because, as we all know, the story is more about the kid trying to, you know, defeat the robbers in that case of, of Marv and, and Friend. I'm blanking out on the names right now. But 
that's what it really comes down to. And that to me is just something that, as I said before, is the only way that you could possibly make that storyline work, though even then it would be a little bit of a stretch. So Max is being described as an energetic, witty, nine-year-old boy with a mischievous side. Mischievous side. He feels wise beyond his years and has the personality to easily converse with adults, plus the uncanny ability to relentlessly push their buttons. But he also displays a sense of innocence and of a kind heart, much like the original protagonist. So basically what I got here is that you're taking an original story, slapping the name of the franchise on there so that people believe that that's what they're getting. You instead telling a completely different story. And then on top of that too, you have it be where essentially it's not Home Alone, but it's Home Alone meets another film that deals with something similar. And actually, uh, one could say it's a role that Macaulay Culkin could have played at one point in his life, but ended up not playing it. And that's Dennis the Menace. Because that is what this comes across as. It sounds to me as if the source talking to Collider's Jeff Snyder, or possibly to the Observer, is ta basically taking the plot from Dennis the Menace, combining it with some elements of Home Alone, and saying, hey, look, it's a new idea. It's an old property, but a new idea. To me, this just goes ahead to show you how lazy modern-day Hollywood is, how lazy the writers are, how lazy the producers are, that they can't come up with original content anymore. They can't give money and pump money into original projects. Could you imagine if we were getting new Home Alone stories, meaning a, a film like Home Alone, where it's authentic and it's uh, you know revolutionary for its time period, and it's one that becomes a massive success? Could you imagine if we were getting more of those films? Could you imagine if we were getting some awesome original sci-fi accounts and sci-fi stories? It would be great. We are living in the golden age of cinema as far as technology is concerned. It is now easier than ever to make a movie, a high-quality movie with high-quality visuals and sound. It is now easier than ever to get these films together on a small amount of money. Go ahead and look to some of these awesome low-budget, small-budget films that have been made, and it shows you what you're able to do with less. There is so much more you can do because when you have less, when you can't rely on crazy CGI, when you can't rely on giant visual effects teams, etc., it means that you have to focus more on telling a good story because the visuals cannot outweigh the story, like what happens, unfortunately, in most giant budget films these days, is that you have more style over substance, as is in the case of things like Endgame, Toy Story 4, etc., where it's all about the style and not really about the substance, and it leaves us all wanting more good original content. You can do that now better than ever before. That's the kind of thing I want to see. I want to see new original stories. I want to see the next Home Alone. Not a reboot, not a rehashing, not a retelling, but the next major PG family film that's going to essentially have a major impact on the culture, much like Home Alone still has to this day. You can now talk to most people in the world and talk about Home Alone, and they'll know exactly what you're talking about. But most of the movies that come out nowadays, you would have no idea what they were about. None whatsoever. So with all that being said, if, if this is indeed true, it shows you, continually shows you, uh, rather, uh, continues to show you how absolutely creatively bankrupt Hollywood remains to this day, and also tells you once again that there really isn't any reason to go see movies anymore, because they're either going to be some type of remaking, rehashing, and in all likelihood, it's going to be much, much worse than the golden golden movies we got back in the 90s and beforehand. But anyway, before ending this video, I want to give a huge shout out to MVD Visual for sending me two more movies to review. Lord almighty, I am falling way behind on those. And I know if you are a subscriber to the second channel, I have not been producing as much content over there as I hoped to had planned to do. I've just found myself running out of time with a lot of things happening recently and just a lot of other things distracting me. I have ADD, so sometimes it's hard for me to stay focused. And also, as I said before, one of the reasons why I took away my Monday stream is because I just, I was fearing burnout. I wasn't being burnt out, but I felt myself on the cusp of it. So I think that's kind of also something that's been holding me back is I don't want to get burnt out on doing videos and everything like that because I love doing this and I'm still having fun doing it. And I don't want to burn myself out and start to hate it and see it as a job because I don't at this point. It's just more fun for me. But what's also fun are a couple of movies that I was sent. So the first one, I'll start with the lesser one, is a movie called GG All In or GG Allen All in the Family, which is a movie that I don't think I will enjoy. <laughs> just going to be perfectly honest here. It's a documentary that deals with the family of a rock star that died at the age of 37. And what's crazy to me is the fact that this is a guy that apparently defecated on stage, fought and had sex with his audiences, and died of a heroin overdose at the age of 37. Something tells me that's not a guy that I'm really going to want to uh, find a, a positive side to, 
uh, because Lord Almighty. But anyway, this is the movie here, and what's hilarious is you got two crazy looking people on one side, and then you've got a just a sweet looking grandma figure on the other. Uh, kind of interesting how that that family uh, came together. But what's more exciting is that I've got another Aero Aero <laughs> Aero video release, and I'm very excited to be getting more of those. And it's a Blu-ray edition, and it's actually a film I've never seen, and it's somewhat more of a recent film, and that is Crimson Peak by Guillermo del Toro. So I love Guillermo del Toro. I think that he's got some wonderful visual effects. I think that he's got a brilliant visual mind. Even though I hate films uh, that he have, like some of the films that he's done recently, I think that he does still have a wonderful. Uh, a visual framework, a wonderful visual eye. Uh, as I said before, I hate films recently like uh, Shape of Water, for example, which to me has a dumb, 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 dumb story no matter what Anna says, uh, but it's still beautiful. It's still visually stunning. And that's one thing that I, I noticed about this when the trailer came out for it was that it looked visually stunning. It looked terrifying because I don't do scary films, but now that I've been sent this and it's a, you know, Aero Video release, meaning it's going to be a very good addition, a good transfer, and just having a lot of the special effects, or not just special effects, but special features, in addition to everything else, has me very, very excited for that. And it's got a great cast to boot, so I'm very excited for that too. It looks like we've got Jessica Chastain in this film, Tom Hiddleston in this film, and of course uh, Mia uh, Waskowski. I'm sure at Waskowska, Wasi Wasikowska. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that, but she was Alice in Alice in Wonderland uh, in the most recent film. So very excited to watch this at some point. Hopefully next week. At the latest will be when I start to watch all of these films and review them, including the ones that my boy Bruce has sent me. Uh, but anyway, wanted to give a shout out to MVD Visual for sending those to me. And also for letting you know that those are movies that are out right now. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, smash the like button. Give me a subscribe. It helps me out a lot. You're all amazing and beautiful people. Also, if you follow me on Twitter, you know that uh, Amazon canceled my affiliate account because apparently I was violating the terms and conditions. Apparently, you can't have a link that does not lead to an actual product. I had a general link that led to the Amazon page in general uh, that had my code attached to it. So that's no longer present. So I had to create a new account. I don't know if they're going to cancel it because of some terms and conditions there. I don't know. Um, but that is one reason. Also, apparently, I can't point people to those links mentioning that I get something from it, which to me is stupid because that means that I would have to lie to you about the fact that I do get something from it and that it does help the channel because of the reason that they, I do get something from it. I don't know. It's very, very confusing. I tried reaching out to them and just got nowhere with it. I tried to appeal it. They denied it. So ended up losing maybe about 20 bucks, so really not all that much uh, money in the first place. But still, uh, new links are now available in the description of this video. And just so you know, even though there isn't any more general Amazon link, if you do use any of the links in the description and you use or buy something within a, I think, 24-hour period is the metric, it'll still... Uh, it'll still count towards you having used my link, even if you don't buy the actual product that it's linked to. I'm sure I'm not allowed to say that either, but hey, as I said before, I always like to be honest with you guys about that kind of stuff. But anyway, hope you have a wonderful day. Have a great one. You guys are amazing and beautiful people. Have a wonderful day, and as always, God bless.